Hola a todos, me llamo Datai y si hay algo extraño en el vecindad, ¿quién vas a llamar? Well, you know. Anyway, we are in the middle of the Pokemon Tower, graveyard thingamajig. And, uh, let's see, do I already have a repel up? No, I don't, so let's set that up. And, hold on. Alright, I had that at 100% speed, I'm not entirely sure why. It's probably messing around with something I don't remember. Oh god, now there are vampires too? Jeez. So, if somebody pointed out that's like a Shindo 1 thing, Shinto, I guess. Like, I hate it when Americans use a D sound instead of a T sound. Like, when the people in X Play say Naruto, and it, it just pisses me off so much, because it's the T. It's a freaking T. There's no room for error. And then Shindo and Shinto. Well, I should be careful, because Shindo is the name of an awesome Go player, so yeah. So anyway, yeah, we're still fighting ghosts, and I'm too scared to put the Ghostbusters music up, because I'm afraid the... No, oh, for the love of God, I'm afraid the copyright people are going to jump on it. The... Oh, shit, no, wait, I put that in a shiny gold video, didn't I, crud? Oh, I'm going to have to probably bother with that at some point. Let's go back and heal that paralysis. Whoop dee doo. I don't think there are any Pokemon in the first generation that are immune to paralysis, because stuff like Limber doesn't exist yet. It's just. It's annoying. So, yeah, more ghastly. Whoop dee doo. -de you know, if they're gonna have an entire place dedicated to uh, ghost types, I have more than a single evolutionary line. I mean, really. Alright. Uh, uh, they couldn't even think of a whole bunch of original dialogues. They just had blah, 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 for a bunch of it. Jeez. I swear to God, if you paralyze, I swear. I'm cursed. I. St Ugh. Few people are saying like I have insane luck. Well, I, I do have insane luck, but God damn it, I hate it when that happens. Anyway, right handy. I'll deal with that later. Hell. Can't bike inside a graveyard, sorry. That would be disrespectful. There we go. So tedious. Probably should have cut that out, honestly. I short enough that I don't need to bother cutting it out and hmm. This is an odd place. Uh this is this is a public graveyard, you know. I'm I'm supposed to be allowed to be in here and like holy crap. It's brown and not purple for some reason. So yeah, and here's where you absolutely need this lift scope. If, if you don't have it, you can run from the wild encounters, ex except this guy. Whoa, crazy green. So it's a Marowak, a ghost Marowak that unfortunately you cannot catch. And if you use the Poké Doll on this, uh, you can get away and it will disappear completely. If you just run away normally, it will remain there. And you can't catch it. I, I wish you could. So, yeah, I guess these tombstones are kind of pointless because they're off in the afterlife and not stuck here. It would be sucked to stuck in a tower for all your life. Anyway, what's up here, I wonder? <laughs> well, my god, whoa. Whoa, let's, let's try that one more time. Okay, this is a little better. And I don't think there are wild Pokemon up here. Hope not. Whoa, god. Damn it, you people. Grandpa. Wait, I, I, I didn't know you talked... Wait, oh, it's, it's for space limitations, of course. But who is this grandpa person? Invisible? Render, render myself invisible. That's... That's silly, I gotta say. You guys are already running out of material. Anyway, these people are slightly better than how they were at... Uh, the base, but overall, well, we do have evolved forms of the Pokemon now, and that's slightly harder, I guess. The only real threatening one is still Weezing, because Weezing is somewhat decently defensive, and it's going to take a while to get down if you just suck or something, I guess. Yeah, yeah, see so you. Oh, here's an old guy. 
Let's. Oh, geez, there are wild Pokemon here. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, suck it up, baby. Ah! I'm trying to see if there's like a hidden item here, because there's a hidden item here in Fire Red and Leaf Green. God damn it, Pikachu, don't do. I can't even get behind there. No! Yeah, you can find Wild Cubone, by the way. There, nope. So if I run leaf green, if you use the item finder directly under where this guy stands, you'll find an item. I forget what. Don't don't tell me. It doesn't matter. Hey, Mr. Fuji. Uh, I, I gotta wonder how he got past the, the Marowak, you know? Well, gee, I think you got past it, didn't you? Wait, you got past it before I said it. How did you do that? Are you... Is he magical? What? Yeah, uh, yeah. And then when you talk to him, he'll give you a very, very useful item, honestly. It seems like a one-time key item, but uh, it's actually a lot better because you will never have to use an Awakening ever again. And it's so helpful. So helpful. So, let's, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Well, I don't want to start on the next route yet, so let's go back and heal. And I do have a significant time left, so I suppose that I will make that pitch to you guys once I'm in position outside the Pokemon Center. Alright, my pitch is this. Uh, Nerdy Potato has hinted this a little bit at various times in the recent days. He and I are doing something of a collaboration hack. He's doing all the work and I'm making a couple of custom sprites for him. A, cu a, cu a couple as in like the entire set of Johto, minus the Legendary, because he did not like Legendaries. And basically, if you have any uh, experience in making sprites, and you are interested in helping out, and would like to pitch in for the Kanto and Hoenn sprites, that would be much appreciated on my part, because I don't want to have to do 300 some sprites by myself. It's, it would take a long time, and it would be just bad. So, uh, since the Nerdy Potato is heading this project, I recommend that you contact him about it. Uh, we have a thread in the scrap box on Poke Community. Uh, we've gotten mostly positive comments so far, except there's a couple dick holes, I'll admit. Um, and that's... Uh, if you have experience in other parts of hacking, like scripting or... Mapping, I think, Potato wants to handle. But other aspects of hacking, uh, that's... More than welcome, I'm sure. So, uh, contact the potato, check out our thread, and, uh, okay, let's see what else I got here. Um, I'm not going to read another poem. Poems are... Both the poems I had for homework this weekend were very depressing. One was about a dead deer, and the other one was about a dead student. Okay, here's a Darwin Award. There's, if you don't like Darwin Awards, go away. Darwin Award's Rocket Tester, confirmed by Darwin, 8th of June, 1983, North Carolina. Um, the Army base at Fort Bragg has he seen its share of military accidents, including the following, a true story and an object lesson often recounted on explosive devices ranges to teach soldiers a basic safety, le safety lesson. Leave a dud round where it lies. At the LAW, Light Anti-Take Weapon Range, Soldiers are afforded the rare privilege of firing a real law round, although the test rounds are smaller and not armed with the full explosive power of actual laws. They have an orange chalk warhead and resemble a model rocket. One day, the designated range safety officer, Sergeant Lowe, was assigned the job of setting up the moving target with the assistance of a three-man detail. The installation of the target on the carrier was hampered by the absence of proper tools, so they improvised and used a steel tent peg as a hammer to nail the car target to the carrier. While walking on the firing range, Sergeant Lowe spotted and picked up an M72A2 66mm law dud round that had not exploded upon impact with the target. The other men in the detail warned him to leave it on the ground and let the EOD, Explosive Ordnance Detachment, handle it. Sergeant Lowe replied, It's just an old dud, and to illustrate the nature of the round, began to strike it with a steel tent peg. The psych second strike tipped the pressure-sensitive piezoelectric detonator, causing the round to explode. Explosion tore, explosion tore off Sergeant Lowe's left arm, parts of his right hand, and inflicted fatal wounds to his lungs and abdominal area. 
Instead of the EOD, a medical evacuation aircraft was dispatched to the hospital and from the hospital, and an Army Force Next team arrived to literally scoop the remains of a former range safety officer. Always remember, leave a dud round where it lies. Reference to U.S. Army safety incidents and reports a number... Some shit. I'm not reading that. That's like 10 decimals. Foolproof systems do not take into account the ingenuity of fools. That'll do. See you guys next time.